model. On the next page, what you'll see is this framework has actually been applied in the national capital region for some time. Many of the projects that have been executed in the national capital region have been done according to this model. And you'll see in the center there some things such as RITIS uh, to the left of the graphic in the integration layer, which stands for Regional Integrated Transportation Information System. That platform is an integration tool that talks to each of the regional DOTs and posts information on incidents. Uh, you'll see uh, WebEOC on the right-hand side of the integration layer. That's the SIM software that the region has adopted. Uh, you'll see links in the lower right around 4 o'clock in the integration layer graphic, which is the Law Enforcement Information Exchange Network. Uh, HC standard in the, at around 2 o'clock in the graphic um, is the health information platform. Um, CAPWIN at around 7 o'clock in the graphic is another application that's used primarily in law enforcement and transportation to aggregate and push out information. And these tools run across what's called INETS. You'll see that navy blue oval in the integration layer, which is the region's in, uh, fiber network. And it, and it exchanges information between the data layer and across this INETS network according to the Data Exchange Hub standards, which is the navy oval on the right side of the integration layer. Those are protocols for running information across INETS. And so this region has had some experience with applying this model and developing different integration layer tools so that the different communities, the medical community with HC standard, the law enforcement community with LINX, the transportation community with RITIS, uh, the emergency management community with WebEOC, have built all of these tools with UAPC funds over the last 10 years and built out some of this conceptual model. So we wanted to take this model and this thinking and apply it to the video world. So if you go to the next slide, which shows some of the video sharing ground rules, you had to determine what were some of the requirements, if you will, for sharing video. And you'll see here listed that, first off, video sharing must be both horizontal and vertical. Horizontal meaning from one county to the next, or one municipality to the next, i.e. one jurisdictional level as well as vertical, meaning from a municipality to a county to a state to a federal agency. Um, the new system should support any sharing currently in place. We didn't want to undo whatever sharing was already going on. The other thing we wanted to focus on was providing this sharing to centers, such as emergency management operations centers, fusion centers, transportation operations centers, and the like and those centers would further distribute it to their users and their user base. So that was our focus, was to go from center to center. On the next slide, the video sharing ground rules continue. There's certain expectations out of both the source agency and the receiving agency or the viewing agency. For example, the source agency decides what to share. They have to determine what cameras and what video they want to, put, want to uh, contribute to the regional view. There are some cameras that are particularly sensitive. They may be within an agency within, to concerning the internal workings of an agency. And they're not something that anyone in the region has necessarily a need to see, nor would an agency want to serve that up. So they determine what cameras to share. The video remains under their control. If, if they don't record it, then anyone receiving it does not have the right to record it. If they have a retention policy that's followed, that's the retention policy that applies to that video. They determine the security level for each video, and that has, a, has ramifications later on for how you are protected. Uh, they determine the permissions and get who gets to see it. They retain hand tilt zoom con camera control. First off, technologically, it's a lot more difficult to drive PTZ control to another user outside of that system, but also from a policy standpoint, none of the agencies participating was particularly anxious to give up that control to someone outside their agency. So this project is primarily to give visibility to the video, and if you want the camera to be moved, you would call the operations center of the video that's 
the video owner and ask them to turn the camera, which is frankly what's done today. It's a practical approach to it. Um, and the source agencies don't want to have any major modifications made to their current video system. Now, as far as the viewing agencies, they can request stored images from the source agency. They can only retain or share with the, only with the permission from the source agency. An MOU would be needed for recording video when the source agency does not. Um, they may request the agency record videos, and they may request cam and tilt zoom control movement. The next uh, slide shows some of the as-is video sharing capability. The, the current as-is capability is limited to a combination of video sharing in both the data and the presentation layers. And they've been successful in the short term, but they don't scale well. And they're very expensive and difficult to implement widely. So we're looking for a more network-friendly approach and a more efficient way of sharing. What comes next is a few num a number of slides showing how you might achieve interoperability and what some of the shortcomings might be of that approach. For example, this next slide shows what is currently going on. And what it basically shows is that the agencies are the various color agencies at the data layer and what types of systems they already have. Uh, the Maryland Transportation Authority is the blue all the way to the left. Maryland State Highway Administration is the green column, second in. VDOT is the gold color, third from the left. Prince George's County is the reddish pink color, fourth from the left, and so on. This shows in the fine print what types of systems they have. For example, Maryland State Highway Administration has about 200 Cortec encoded cameras and they move video around at about 352 kilobits per camera stream. And right now, Maryland State Highway Administration is accepting feeds from the Maryland Transportation Authority, um, which is the blue to the left, is, is moved over to the chart video system in green. They also accept feeds from Prince George's County, which has about 40 access encoded cameras and they push video around at two mega, megabits per stream. So they accept video from Prince George's County. They also accept video from Montgomery County, which is in the center of the graphic, in purple. And then CHART pushes that information out to the recipient agencies up in the presentation layer. And the way, you, the way it's done today is those agencies in the presentation layer must have a separate workstation from CHART to be able to view images in the chart network. And so if you're a transportation operations center and you have your native system, which you're showing video on your video wall from your agency, over in the corner you also have a chart video so that you can look at Maryland State Highway Administration video. And that's how it was done today. And the reason it's done that way is chart is in essence extending their network to these other agencies and putting a terminal in those other agencies' facilities. Not the best way to do it, because when you want to see State Highway Administration video, you've got to go over to the corner and look at that terminal. So it's not particularly well ingrained into the operations of the, of the agency that's receiving the video. We'd like to discuss three different potential types of video sharing. It would be video sharing at the presentation layer, video sharing at the data layer, and then video sharing through a physical security information management PSIM model, which is kind of a combination of sharing at the presentation layer and data layer models. So we're going to walk through a couple of graphics that illustrate each of these three types of sharing. The next slide, which shows the example one, this would be client-based video sharing at the presentation layer. And what it is, is it kind of extends the type of sharing that's going on today in the existing as-is condition by providing a terminal from your system to an agency who wants to see your video. And as you can see from the graphics, uh, you need to provide a terminal at those other agencies, and you need to extend your network 
to those other agencies, either through a leased line or a dedicated fiber line or some sort of method. But it imposes network costs and it does provide some vulnerability to your network as a as the host uh, serving agency because you now have a terminal in another agency. It's difficult to maintain that terminal. It poses problems from a uh, inventory and physical property management aspect. There's issues associated with this, and it's not particularly scalable once you get more than a handful of agencies involved in this kind of sharing. You can see down the bottom from a cost control security standpoint, if you go with a red, green, yellow uh, kind of schema, uh, scalability is the biggest problem over to the right being red. The next slide, which is an example two, and it basically shows sharing at the data layer. And in this fashion, you allow agencies to access your video and your camera and your system uh, at the data layer. And it has many of the same problems as the presentation layer in that you have to have network connectivity across all these different agencies and you have to allow them within your you have to allow them access to your application which will allow them to actually pull the camera that they want to see. Well, as you can see across the bottom, this has issues associated with cost, control, security, and scalability. Uh, you, it results in a lot of network costs, uh, a loss of control, uh, security issues in terms of allowing people into your network and your application, and the same kind of scalability issues we saw on the previous slide. The next slide is an example of the PSIN model. This, and we use uh, DCHC as an example because they've implemented a PSIN model, and this. The PSIM approach is very good from the standpoint of aggregating data, aggregating video. In this, in this model, um, DCEMA is the aggregation point. And typically what happens is a request to DCEMA goes down to their hub at the data layer, and then a request to the appropriate agency and camera is made, and that camera provides the feed back the DCH schema in the presentation layer. And so it is a good method for aggregating video and centralizing it at one point, in this case DCEMA. However, the issue with this approach is serving it up to multiple users. Um, this approach is not particularly friendly to that. If you go to the next, le uh, the next slide, which you can see looks like spaghetti, <laughs> If everyone was to adopt this type of approach, you have uh, a lot of issues in terms of scalability, in terms of security control and cost in maintaining such a system. Uh, it does do, PSIM systems are very good for aggregating video and for application within an agency, but the methodology of accessing cameras um, doesn't particularly scale well to use that type of approach for sharing video. So, with all of that as a backdrop, we want to move to the next slide, which is the recommended 2B video sharing concept. And what we're basically saying, the foundation of it is that interoperability is achieved at the integration layer, not achieved at the presentation layer or the data layer. Rather, you achieve the interoperability in the integration layer. The challenge is to normalize the data into something that is uh, more standards-based and easily consumable by others. And it also the challenge is to distribute the data using a secure architecture. And lastly, our view towards interoperability is that the data should be able to be viewed in each agency's current presentation layer application, meaning the approach should be to leave the legacy system alone, allow the legacy system to do what it does, publish from that legacy system, and consume it back into your legacy system so that you can see it within your own within your own application. We've got some graphics that show that concept. 